Welcome back to In Pit Lane. Well, our guest tonight is a man well known for his uh, deeds behind the wheel of a V8 supercar and in GT racing and also behind the wheel of a two-seater Formula One car, believe it or not, at the Australian Grand Prix. He also happens to be Cam's motorsport motorsport man development manager. His name is Cameron McConville. Cam, thanks for joining us in Pit Lane. Good to be back, mate. Thank you. Now, let's uh, find out. For, first of all, coming up this weekend, the Shannon's Nationals is down at Phillip Island. And as yep. we said, a huge field in the in GT racing. You've done some GT racing. It's It's been the success story of all time, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. And I mean, it's, it's hard to see a, an end to it, really. 35 cars coming on board for the Sunday race, which is the, uh, the 101. Mm -hmm. So the very first time for Shannon's Nationals anyway, that we've actually had two races or two rounds of GT in the one weekend. So we've got the GT Championship on Saturday, which is two one hour events. And then the CAMS Endurance Championship for GT cars on the Sunday, which is that, that well-known 101. So it's great to have them back at the Nationals. And uh, I think GT racing, as you say, globally is certainly on the crest of a wave at the moment. Why do you think that is? I mean, why has GT3 become just such a phenomenal success? Well, look, I think a number of reasons, and you've got to hand it to Tony Quinn and Ken Collier for sticking with it, because if you go back uh, seven or eight years, or even in the 15 years ago when it was Nations Cup, you know, the numbers really struggled. I think when you look at what's happening in Europe and, and the gentleman racer, I think the format actually has a lot to do with it, this pro-am, where GT drivers can invest in a car, and I mean, they're expensive equipment, but they can hire a gun, an XV8 driver, or a current. You know, we've got uh, Garth Tander, Shane Van Gisbergen running this weekend, some big names. Um, you know, and I think that gives those guys the opportunity to learn off them, drive with a pro. So I think the the mix of uh, amazing cars, you know, and and they are actually for these amateur drivers, they're a real buzz for them to drive. They get a lot out of them. They're probably a little bit easier to drive than say a V8 supercar because they've got traction control, ABS. So a mixture of equipment and I think that they've really got the formats right. So that's just uh, continued to, to aid that growth. This is the second round of the Shannon's Nationals. We had the first out at Sandown. And I have to say, I mean, the, the Shannon's Nationals is a bit like the Curate's Egg. In fact, it's, you know, it's good in parts. The race meeting at Sandown was probably one of the best value for money weekends that yep. you would find anywhere. I mean, you had the sports sedans, you had V8 touring cars, a big field of sports races. That's a category that's starting to, to take off as well. Plus the GTs, the trophy series. Mm. Um, it was a fabulous event. How do you get that consistency happening? Because, as I said, some meetings are amazing, some are diamonds, and some just, you know, don't have that luster. Well, it's a mixture of categories that, that make up, you know, the Shannons this year. And, I mean, full credit to Rob, you know, Kirkpatrick, who started it a decade ago with the support, of course, of Shannons. Um, you know, Penrod have come on board this year. So, commercially, it's very sound. Um, eight categories, as you mentioned, at Sandown. Great to have TCM back, the start of the GT Trophy yeah. Series. Um, you know, the stalwarts F3 were there, the sports races. So, but then when you get to an endurance event like this weekend coming up at Phillip Island, clearly the GTs and the Australian production cars that are back take up most of the track time. So it makes it very difficult to have more than four categories. So whilst you say, ah, oh, there's only four categories there, you know, I think the excitement of having GT come to the Shannon's Nationals, uh, the, the resurgence of production cars, they've got over 20 cars this weekend. So it, we, we have to work within what the categories want. And I think the Shannons has always been, yes, OK, it's probably a little bit of a, a level below V8 supercars, but at the same token, um, you know, I think the, the, the championship is going to grow and hopefully we can attract some other categories uh, over the long term that want to come and run on the nationals as well. So where do you see it fitting in? I mean, you've got obviously at the top level, you've got V8 supercars and the categories that run with them, and we'll talk more about that in just a moment. But... Mm. Then you've got the state series that we saw at Sandown this weekend, and I suppose it's getting the balance right. I yeah, mean, the numbers were down a little bit in some of the state rounds, and that was because a lot of people said, "Well, some of us, some of we've lost people to the Shannons, or, we, or, or the, the meetings are too close together, that sort of thing." How do you get that balance right? Yeah, it's a tricky one, Brett. Very, and it's a really good point. You know, I think I think the the grassroots will will always be state racing, club level state racing, and Shannons Nationals was was probably created for those categories that perhaps couldn't afford to be with the V8 supercars um, and more grassroots. I think it's probably evolved into being more than a grassroots championship, but I think it fits perfectly between state level and V8 supercars, but while still attracting some categories that may race on the V8 supercars from time to time. I mean, you look at 
If you flip it the other way, the Kumo V8 series has been a stalwart of the Shannons Nationals, but they've moved on to the V8 supercars. They've been, as their success has grown, their popularity has grown, they want to run a couple of V8 events. So, look, I think it's, it's a mixture, not forgetting our, our sort of feeder categories that are there in motorsport. Um, not trying to compete against V8 supercars. We're not going to be at street circuits. We want to support permanent tracks. Tail and Ben might come online with the Shannons Nationals at some point in the future when that circuit is finished. Um, so I think this year we're not going to reinvent the wheel, just you know, create a little bit more value, uh, like Sandown that was free entry for CAMS members. We're doing the same at Winton on the 10th of June, free entry. Um, and just, just grow it and see where it evolves over the year. We mentioned uh, V8 Supercars, they were up at Winton on the weekend. Also up at Winton was the opening round of the Toyota 86 series. Yeah. It sort of snuck out, out, came on us out of nowhere. 38 cars. Mm. Um, if you look at the, the people who were involved, I mean, the, the winner, Cameron, and um, all of those people, a lot of young people coming out of yeah. karting and Formula Ford and all that. Obviously, they're the sort of people that you wanted to get into Formula 4, and they're not going to Formula 4. They've gone to this in big numbers instead. Does that tell you that there's perhaps something needs to be done in the terms of the formula you've got for Formula 4? Uh, yes and no. I think, um, you know, for sure Cameron Hill, you know, won it. There's no doubt that he's a talent, you know. Um, Will Brown was fourth, or he's currently doing F4. You know, I think 38 cars. I think, I think, I don't think Toyota 86 is definitely, is, is effectively a rival, if you like, or competitor to F4. I think it's a different space, you know, in the development pathway. I think it's probably more, if, if a kid wants an open wheeler career, I don't think he's going to go to Toyota 86. I think it's great. You know, it's great because we've got more people competing, firstly, in motorsport. In answer to your question about F4, um, you know, I think we're, we're reviewing all, all assets, all, all facets of the championship for next year. There's no doubt um, we'd like more cars on the grid. Absolutely no doubt. We've probably been a bit of a victim of the success of the series last year, you know, with four kids going overseas. Um, you know, we'd like to think that they might come back for the odd round or two. Lewis Leeds is currently leading, you know, British F4. Yep. That's fantastic from a development point of view. Mm. I think we probably need to try and align ourselves more with V8s though, and not just, mm. it, you know, it's not all about Europe. We need yep. to get kids into V8s as well. So we're reviewing everything and, uh, you know, we're hopeful. I think year three will be the year that, that will be the telltale year. OK, well, there's so much to talk about, but we're, uh, we're unfortunately right out of time. This is something, well, more about this later, but this is something we'll, we won't have this problem much in, more in future. But for now, Cam, yeah. thanks for joining us um, on In Pit Lane, and we'll see you down at, uh, down at Phillip Island on the weekend for the Shannons Nationals. Pleasure, mate. Get on down there. Thank you. Thank you.